Agency. Cindy, who is sometimes a very bossy lady, runs a detective agency as well. She is very no, she is 28 years old. Bearing in mind you have to be as fit as a cheater to do gymnastics to be a detective. Cindy, when she finds spare time, is being a shy, timid young girl she likes to transform to. Despite the fact she is a world record tennis player, she is 100% awful at playing the guitar. She also goes horse riding. She has been since the age of six. However, she doesn't have a lot of spare time. In her spare time, she loves going horse riding. She also loves reading Sherlock Holmes and going to the gym. She's quite kind to all the people she works with. However, there are times when she gets stressed and becomes very bossy. Whilst being silent and digging her head into her map, Cindy still has nightmares about the time she got lost in her duvet. Once she dropped an important map in her ketchup at McDonald's because that is her favourite place to eat. A few weeks after her grandfather died, she took over running the family business. Meet Anne. Anne, who is 21 years old, lives in a mythological house with the pet robots. However, she is fairly bossy and shouts very loud at people when they are rude to her. Although Anne wanted to become a fashion model, she ended up being a top special top secret agent for the CIA. She is a lovely young woman who trumps when she is stressed. Even though Anne is very shouty, she still is a, is a close and very loyal friend to both family, friends and colleagues. Despite the trumping habit, Anne is an impeccable acrobat. Brave Anne, who loves sports, will fight for justice and victory. Bones, who is 21, was born in an exciting asset. Shut up! Bones, who lives in London, is a really considerate person. Bones, who is helpful and kind, has never been abroad in Wales. This talented and clever explorer does not like fruit or Brussels. When Bones was little, Bones went to brilliant ballet. If you think that's crazy, then you should hear this. At the age of seven, he got stuck in a dustbin because his mum took the toy car away. Uh, who will be as crazy as that? Hello. Also, once he rode his skateboard and fell over the car and was flying to his own bush. Clever Clogs is what Bones t Bones used to be called when he was younger because he wa he was the smartest in the school. Bones is nearly approaching fifty and still watches the magnificent time team whilst drinking a delicious chocolate milkshake. Bones is a cheerful guy to work with, although he is although he has a terrible temper. One day they received a message that turned the world upside down. My name is Jean Wiggins, the world famous Bohem dancer, who holds over the head the world record for the oldest blogger ever. If you don't know me through my blog, you may have heard about me through my grandson, Matthew Wiggins, all grown up now, how time flies. Now I am writing to you because my brown haired, clever little Matty has been ruthlessly kidnapped. In the hour of 11 o'clock on Friday the 10th of October 2014, the doorbell rang, so I walked over and no one was there. Just a small brown paper parcel. Suddenly I felt a shudder go down my spine when I saw in this, this mysterious package a distressing snapshot of Matthew. I felt something on the back. It was some hair. After the DNA test, I found out it was Matthew's. Tears rolled down my face like a river breaking loose. After hearing about your spectacular abilities, I knew you were the one to call and not the dodgy London police force. In a flash, I stumbled to my study and started to write this letter. I implore you to to react fast before it's too late. There is already a reward, but I will double it to £400,000 if you rescue Matthew and bring him back to me and his home. Also, you will be given dancing tickets to watch the best of the best.
Ghost and Sandy, Gene Wiggins. What do you think, Giants? It sounds like an adventure to me. In the office, Cindy and Bones are debating calmly. I'm not a morning person, guys. Therefore, I'm not going to get six o'clock in the morning to think that is ridiculous. Well, come on, Cindy, despite the fact I'm not really a morning person myself, I still want to go. I'm a technical agency, which is the best in the world. It's all about adventures. Come on, Cindy. Yeah, maybe. If we have spare time, we can go horse riding because there's lots of horses there. Fine. Even though it might be challenging, I'll try to do it for you guys. Thanks, Cindy. I think it's a two-hour drive, but it will still be fun. You want to take a nap now, just to get your energy up for tomorrow? I know you want to take a nap at all. However, if we're going, uh, going to agree on something, shouldn't we do our special handshake? And also, I want to see my dog. I can't wait until takeoff. However, well, there could be hassle ahead. Despite your prediction, you could be wrong. I'm sorry to interrupt, but I heard you were going to the temple, temple of Boom. I heard a long time ago that if you enter, you won't return. I'm ready for this mission, despite not liking the grand call. I'm ready for this challenging mission, though there could be many gangs. Bones, the next flight for England is next week, so you two stop arguing and behave yourselves. I really think this is going to be an adventure, right guys? Yes, indeed. What's that noise? Whoever or whatever, you may be, I'm, I'm innocent, okay? Cindy, Anne, come here. What's the matter? Are you too intimidated to see anyone from home? However, you have grown down to force us to do this. You two, constantly having a go at each other. Look guys, we need to carry on our reputation will end. Ah! What's that noise? Go, go, go away! Look, I know I just screamed, however, it'll only be a guard. Honest? Cindy, it's very funny how you said that, so I don't think guards wear masks. Who are you? Because I never have visitors. For your benefit, we're not visitors. My colleagues and I run a detective agency called the CAB. Cindy, Anne and Bones Detective Agency, to be precise. I do apologise, I'm Ashley. I recently posted a mysterious letter to Miss Jean Wiggins. You know, the grandma complaining to Matthew Wiggins himself? Hmm, 
Cindy Ann and Bones had a camel drawing it all over their face. Bones, who was still half asleep, was mesmerized by the magnificent view of the reflective stars. The moonlit sky blazed above the adventurous heads and nearly made them blind. They were so thirsty they could have got down the whole ocean. And dropped a million miles to get some water. After they had breakfast, which was a snake, they set off on their journey into the desert. While simultaneously being nabbed by his fellow teammates, Bones still disobeyed his order to gather the supplies needed. They grabbed their bags, which were as heavy as an elephant for their adventure. Isolated in the middle of nowhere, the gang admired the scenery. The landscape of the desert was like a graveyard. Cactuses stood like ancient gravestones. The desert is a cruel, unforgetting mirror. Wherever you turn, a reflection of a dusty, deserted place with tumbleweed rolling around looks back at you. Never a different view. Behind the dozing camels lay millions of miles of sticky sand. Before the travellers climbed onto their portly camels, Bones, who was scared of spiders, asked what the temperature was. Although it was much cooler at night, precisely 24 degrees, it still felt like burning lava all around you. Noisily, they climbed onto their camels. Cautiously, Anne passed around their only supply of water, keeping an eye on Bones after some previous water problems. As the hairy camels plodded along the silky golden sand, the travellers gazed upon the amazing landscape. All of them had the sun burning on them like hot fire. In the sizzling desert, the moonlight gazed upon the silky sand. As Cindy looked around her, she could see sand until the edge of the earth. Even though it was a lot cooler, sweat dripped down their faces. After journeying for 12 constant hours, the team were exhausted, yet they still carried on. When the team were travelling, the camels became harder and bumpier to ride on. Anne suddenly forgot to look where she was going, so managed to get an awful lot of cactus spares stuck in herself. The long, bumpy trip on the back of a slow camel, endlessly passing cactus after cactus, never really getting anywhere, took its toll on bones, making his tempo get out of control. In the distance, hovered something deadlier than a wild cat, a sandstorm. Suddenly, a gust of wind pushed them back, and with every step, it got windier. At the moment, they can only see dead bushes. Watching and screaming, Anne said she knew what to do. She said she, we need, they needed to find a cave bef before the sandstorm hit them. They felt as weak as a newborn baby. Sand whirled around into a spiral shape. All of a sudden, from out of nowhere came a dusty sandstorm. Behind them, sand chased after the travellers. It was as quick as a cheetah. Tossed and turned all night long, I rose in the middle of the night feeling exhausted like a mole. <coughs> Despite the fact I'm as hungry as a pig, I don't want to be tortured by the unpleasant monster, so I stay quiet like a mouse. Today for breakfast I had a delicious hot bowl of porridge. It made me as fat as a blue whale. 
Amazingly, last night, I discovered a small stub of chalk lying on the dusty concrete and decided, with great glee, that I would draw a window. With the chalk in my hand and anticipation in my heart, I started showing off my artistic skills and using my vivid imagination to complete a masterpiece. When I eventually finished my picturesque landscape, it included a field of corn with an apple tree in the middle and wild horses galloping all around it. Even though it was 5.30 in the evening, I was still famished. Despite the fact that I have a pure red apple, I was still very hungry. Slowly, I walked across the dusty and rusty old mine with only a candle to keep me going. Whilst going to bed at 7 o'clock, what I think, I was given an uncomfortable beating by the kidnappers, which was very agonising. I pray they don't kill me or take me somewhere else. As well as this, it is physically impossible to relax in this unbearable bed. However, tomorrow might be the day I get taken home to my family. Like that's going to happen. I don't get my hopes up. Completely ignoring the fact I should not be looking at graves. You can still come over and look, can't you? Jolly well, why do you still be looking at the graves? Cut some slack, Bones. I'm sure it won't hurt. I love my job, listening to Happy all day long. I know this is awesome. It's not like anybody's going to come to the scariest place in the world. Grey has dust on that, it's as thick as fur. Ew, how gross is that? Why do you think we should have touched that disgusting grey? I don't know, it was probably just because I wanted to see what it felt like. Well, stop it, okay? Where do you think the entrance is? Well, that's where you, how you get into that. As Indiana and Bones are going to the Temple of Boom to find the famous scientist, Professor Matthew Wiggins. Let's go find Matthew. We're at Matthew's room! Anne finds a broken paperclip in her pocket and picks the lock, entering Matthew's room. We're from the CAB. I can't believe we found you. Sorry, sorry. She always gets like this, Matthew. Does anyone know the way out of here? I do. Come on, Bones. Can't you stand still? It's going out of your skin. Is that really, Bones? And I told you, you've got to look after him. Sorry, but I can't move. Oh, come on, then. If you three follow me, I'll save your lives. <laughs> Phew, we've lost them, but not for long. Oh, this is so annoying. Come on, Cindy, hurry up. I mean, you can do it. There, I did it. Come on, Matthew, it's your turn. I'm coming. Carefully, you're nearly there. I never thought Mother Nature's wonders would be this amazing. I suppose being locked up in a dingy dark cell is not enough to make the sort of dreams out of the imagination. What on earth are you on about? Sorry, I didn't catch a word of that. Mind pe repeating it? Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! What on earth are you... On about. None of your beefness. Stop talking and start with the walking. <laughs> thank you, I thank you. What could I ever do to repay you? Oh, nothing. It's just one thing every day job can do. Or you can pay us a million pounds. And you know no better than that. <laughs> oh, oh, I think we may have lost some, but they might not be far behind. We should get a move on. 